did you manage to find anything to go in that new printer we got to build, you know, to replace the Raspberry Pi? No, no, the Raspberry Pis are out of stock basically everywhere. We can't get one. Oh, they did send one. No, oh, no, not a Pi. Oh, let me have a look. What is it? It's a, a fly Pi. So I guess it's, it's not a Raspberry Pi, but it does the job of the Raspberry Pi, right? Interesting. Who's it by? Mellow and Team Gloomy. Interesting. Well, I guess we better take a bit of a closer look at it then. Hi everyone, Adam here from Vector3D and today we're taking a look at the Mellow Pi, a new release from Mellow and Team Gloomy, which is set to kind of sit in that position where the Raspberry Pi would typically sit in your 3D printer, but it has some slightly different features and opportunities for doing things which you wouldn't necessarily get with a very versatile but not purpose-made Raspberry Pi. The plan for today is to run through what you get in the box, kind of a little bit about what it is and how to set it up. But this isn't a review. I've not really used it particularly, so I can't really provide much in terms of feedback or opinions, but I can help you set it up because I have done that. PCBWay is a all-in-one manufacturer and assembly service for PCBs, but now they also do CNC machining, injection molding, sheet metal fabrication, and 3D printing. It's really easy to use. You can just upload your files and you'll get an instant quote and automated design for manufacturer feedback to help you just in case you need to improve your design a little bit. They also sponsor educational and engineering programs. So to try out PCBWay's easy ordering service, follow the link in the video description to pcbway.com. So in the box with the Mellow Fly Pi, you'll also get a short USB-C cable some terminated cables that are just terminated on one end for the two UART connectors and the two SPI connectors. They are JST ZH 1.5 millimeter pitch connectors, just so you know. You also get some JST XH 2 and 4 pin plugs for the headers on the board that need those, and a few JST terminals with enough to have a couple of spares. Optionally, you can also get a USB Wi-Fi module as there's no USB built into the board directly and you can get an SD card with a clipper image pre-installed, again, as an option. Other things that you're going to need are a micro SD to USB card reader. You also need a JST-XH crimping tool and a greater than eight gigabyte micro SD card in the event that you've not selected the one that comes with it with the image already installed. So let's get on with the setup guide. I've split this into a number of different segments and you can see those in the chapters and description below if you want to quickly jump to one of those sections. Let's kick off with the firmware. If you purchase a micro SD card alongside the Mellow Pi from Mellow, not just from some random other shop at the same time, then it does come with Clipper firmware or the Mellow Fly OS pre-installed. So you can skip, skip this first step and go straight on to the configuration step. First things first, you're going to need to do a little bit of software preparation. So download a flashing tool for flashing an image to the SD card. In this case, I'm going to use Belena Etcher, but something like Win32 Disk Imager would also work. And you're also going to need to download and install an SSH tool. So I'm going to use Putty. The last thing to download is the Clipper firmware, or in this case, it's called FlyOS, which is an integrated firmware. So it has Moonraker, Clipper, Fluid, Mainsail, and clip a screen all on that image at once. And then we'll do a bit of configuration before the first boot in order to configure which bits of it we're actually going to be using. Obviously you can't use Fluid and Mainsail at the same time because they are both web interfaces. To flash the firmware to the micro SD card, you need to insert the micro SD card into the PC via a micro SD card adapter. Select the FlyOS image that you've just downloaded from Mello and then select the device to flash to, which is the micro SD card you've inserted. Then just click flash and wait a minute or two for the process to complete. Before we carry on, I do want to let you know that the Vector 3D VLMP or Vertical Linear Motion Press, which is basically the 3D printed threaded insert press for threaded inserts, is now available for pre-order at vector3d.co.uk. So the next step is to configure FlyOS, which is the Clipper installation on our micro SD card. So to do this, first take the micro SD card out of whatever computer you've just flashed it and put it back in. It should then reread and you'll see a small list of files and structure and whatnot that's now flashed onto this micro SD card. You'll probably get some weird errors and stuff as it's inserted as well, because there's like 
multi partition weird things because it's obviously a boot device for another computer. It just gets a bit weird. But basically, you want to be able to see this list of files, and that's what we're going to be looking at. The specific file you're looking for is called fly config.conf or conf, and you want to open it with a text editor like Notepad or Notepad, or maybe VS Code, something that's not going to like add weird formatting or rich text formatting or anything like that weird to it. The first session we come to is board. Here you want to enter the name of the board that you're using, but this is only for the actual Mellow Fly boards. If you don't own one of these, don't worry, just leave it as it is and configure your own board once you've installed Mainsail. For the Fly Pi, which is what we're doing here, I put the name as fly-pi-v1. The next section is the web interface. So we have options for Fluid or Mainsail. They are both installed, so you can use either one. I'm going to use Mainsail, so I set the line to UI equals Mainsail. The other user interface option we have here is Clipper Screen, so you literally just enable it or disable it with true or false, depending on whether you're going to use that or not. Next is setting up Wi-Fi, so this will work either if you're using the M.2 slot or the USB card, either will be fine. First you need to set Wi-Fi equals true, and that will enable it to actually use the Wi-Fi, and then you need to enter your SSID and password for your network. Obviously, I'm not going to share mine, but this is roughly what it would look like with some spoofed data in there. Lastly, we configure the system section. Now, for most of the Western audience, this is not going to be a problem, but if for some reason in your country you can't access GitHub, you can change the repository to be somewhere else. In this section, we also set the display that we want to use. So if we're going to be using Clipper Screen, you can set it to none, HDMI or FBTFT. Obviously, none would be no display. If you are using FBTFT, then you need to select the model number that you're going to be using. So for example, fly underscore TFT underscore V1. Since I'm not going to have display attached, it doesn't actually matter what I put here. I'll just leave it as what it already is. Before we do the wiring, we probably also want to mount it to something more sturdy than just floating around. For this, I've created a bracket. So this is designed for DIN rail adapters on the back. So if you're having a, like a larger Voron 2.4 or Trident, for example, DIN rail adapters allow you to clip it onto that rail and it mounts like anything else. If you're using it in, for example, a V0, you can just not use the DIN rail adapters and use some tape and attach it to the back panel. In terms of the hardware to use the mount, I've used eight M3 threaded inserts that are the Voron spec ones four M3 by eight screws and four M3 by 10 screws. The first thing we're gonna do for the wiring is connect the input voltage. This is like obviously the bare minimum and will provide power to the board. For this, we're going to use 12 or 24 volts. In my case, 24 volts. And you can connect in two positions, either through these green screw terminals or the JSTXH header that's also on the side of the board. The next thing to connect up is a fan if you want to do that. This is a five volt connector through a JSTXH header. There's no real control over this fan, it's just a five volt power supply. If you purchase the USB Wi-Fi adapter with your board, then you can just plug it in right into the USB port. It's very simple. If not, if you want to do a wired connection, again, just ethernet into the RJ45 port. And lastly, if you're using an M.2 adapter for Wi-Fi, then just plug that in. Again, we're just plugging stuff in here. This M.2 slot for the Wi-Fi is not capable of using other devices. It's not wired for like standard SSD storage or anything like that. So don't bother trying, it won't work and may damage your device. As I mentioned today, we are mainly covering the basics, but if you do want to plug in anything via UART, then you've got these two connectors on the left-hand side of the board. And for SPI, such as display or something, then you have these two connectors towards the middle of the board. The 40-pin GPIO is basically the same layout as a Raspberry Pi, but it's rotated 180 degrees. So do be aware of that if you plug in other devices. It could be quite a surprise if you try and plug it in one way around and it's not what you expect. Now that we've got the firmware sorted, it's mounted to the printer and all wired up for power, we can do our first boot and a little bit of final configuration. So for the first boot, obviously you want to first safely remove the micro SD card from the PC using the actual safe remove option, and then plug it into the FlyPi and turn it on. Once it's powered on, the first like boot sequence thing will start, but it does take a few minutes, so you just need to be a little bit patient. Once the first boot sequence has run, it should show up as a device on your network. The way I typically find this is by using the IP address of my router, putting that into a web browser, which then displays a list of connected devices. It will show the IP address of the newly connected device, and I can then use that 
to find the actual printer. Once you have the IP address, don't bother browsing to it in a web interface just yet. Firstly, go to PuTTY, the SSH tool, use the IP address to start a new connection, and log in with the username fly and password mello. Upon logging to the device, you'll probably see that there are a number of updates available. So run the command sudo apt update to update and use mello for the password. When it's done, you can do a reboot or whatever, but you're pretty much done here. At this point, you can use, you can access the IP address and start doing your Clipper installation pretty much as normal. My step seven is continue as normal, but with a couple of caveats. If you do have a Mellow Fly control board that's separate obviously from this, then you can follow this link. If you have another board, like a completely different thing from a completely different brand, for example, uh, you can either follow your like board specific instructions if you have those, or just follow the general clipper guide starting from this point here, which will be in this link. Again, it's going to be copied in the description. In terms of that printer.cfg file, which is like the main firmware configuration file for Clipper, that will be partially configured using the settings that we've done in that FlyOS configuration file, but largely it's not that important. Like you can create a completely new printer like configuration file. You can use that one. You can start with that one and modify it. You can do pretty much whatever now. You're just into standard Clipper configuration. So that's going to be it from me today. Thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully that's going to be useful for those of you looking to get or already got a Mellow Fly Pi, maybe having a couple of issues setting it up. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.